In every video we post across all of our platforms, I see the same comment from machinists all over the world. There's always someone saying that we can't run the way you guys do because our machines are old and wore out and they don't even run half the time. Our vices are wore out and they won't hold the part unless we beat them down with a hammer. Or our company only buys the cheapest tools and they only buy one at a time, so we have to make them last as long as we can. Seeing comments like this makes me think back to a guy I worked with at the first machine shop that I got hired on at. They had him setting up a job on one of our Fadal CNC mills and he was about to start gathering his tools and he seen me working close by so he came up to me and he's like looking around both ways making sure nobody else was close by and he leaned in and he got real quiet and he said, what are the chances of me finding a carbide end mill in this shop? And I just started busting out laughing because I didn't think it was a serious question. My response was, man, just close your eyes and pick up any end mill. It's going to be carbide. And he was blown away. His eyes got real big and he's like, you guys don't use high speed steel end mills? I said, man, the only high speed tools you're going to find in this shop are going to be your common twist drills. Other than that, we run all carbide. And he couldn't believe it because all they ran was high speed steel. He said, man, at my shop, if you found a carbide tool, you snatched it up and ran away and hid it in a cave like Gollum on Lord of the Rings. And I couldn't understand that because at the time, this was the only machine shop that I had worked in. So it was the only thing that I really knew. I thought that high speed steel at this day and age was only used in schools. I couldn't believe that real machine shops were still using tooling like this. And what's really mind-blowing is fast forward to nearly 15 years later and I still see comments from all over the world of machine shops that are still ran in the same exact way. So seeing this being such a common thing in today's world leads me to ask the question, at what point does refusing to spend money on tools, equipment, maintenance, or new technology shift from saving you money to costing you money as well as growth. How bad does it have to get before these shop owners and managers begin to realize that they are causing more harm to their business than helping by trying to save a few dollars? Well, I really hope that it's before they pass the point of no return or they completely go under, but I know that's not always the case. I've seen so many shop owners try to tread water and stay in the same place without any growth, up-to-date technology, or process improvement. Well, that business model may work for a while, but the moment there is competition introduced into your area, then keeping that mindset is going to put you on the fast track to bankruptcy. There is no way you can compete in today's world by running your shop the same way you did 30 years ago. In order to compete and continue to compete, you have to stay on top of new technology, stay open to new techniques, and be flexible enough to change and adapt with the market. I mean, in today's world, if you're running high-speed steel tools using outdated cutting methods in a machine that's down 50% of the time, and you're having to add multiple processes and adjusting work offsets constantly and things like that because your machine can't hold tolerance and your fixturing doesn't repeat or hold your parts well, then you're going to be in serious trouble if a shop opens up next door that has decent equipment uses rigid tool holders and good carbide tooling, they utilize efficient machining methods, which may be 300, 400, or even 500% faster than what you're running. That company may have a higher shop rate than your company, but overall, they're gonna be able to make parts faster and cheaper than you will, especially with higher quantity orders. Even their shop culture is gonna be better because being more efficient is going to allow them to take on more work, which will result in higher pay and job security for their employees. And eventually your employees are going to be polishing their resumes up trying to get into the door of that company. The company that I just mentioned that I used to work for had the highest shop rate of anyone else in the region, but we stayed covered up with work. We bought good tooling, we bought good equipment, we kept the maintenance up on everything. All this stuff was very expensive to the shop owner, but it allowed him to get more and more work. And it allowed us to do work faster, 
more efficient. So when you consider the bigger picture than what's right in front of you, is spending $20 on a cheap tool really saving you money over a $40 tool that can triple or quadruple your production? Is purchasing a junk machine that is broke down all the time making you money when it's sitting there not being used? Is hiring five inexperienced people with poor work ethic and paying them minimum wage really better than hiring one top tier person who knows good practices and can program and run your machines efficiently and give them top level pay. You know, Titan, who has been a shop owner for years, did a video on that subject a while back. In it, he explains how a programmer can steer the entire course of your shop, whether it's in a good direction or bad. A bad programmer can keep you in the stone age and stall production, while a good programmer can double or triple your production and cut operating costs at the same time, allowing you to take on more workload or even expand and purchase more machines. So which one is really costing you money. Now I'm not saying just go throw all your money into the business and get head over heels in debt because action without thought is careless. But thought without action is worthless. So it's important to take a step back and try to truly understand how this trade works and how money is made in it. Can cheap, low quality tooling do the same thing as more expensive, better grade tooling? For the most part, yes but can it drastically reduce cycle times and increase tool life at the same time? Can a worn out machine that is constantly needing repairs do the same thing as a new machine that has a monthly payment tied to it? Maybe, with a good enough operator in front of it. But can it keep up with production demands? So I wanna know, is saving money by refusing to invest in good equipment and good personnel really worth it if you're having to sacrifice your success in order to do it? I wanna know your thoughts. Do you agree or do you disagree? agree. Let me know in the comments and if you support what we're doing hit the like and subscribe button. Thank y'all for watching and we'll see you next time.